Okay. So the first question that uh, we had was, um, oh, anything you want to say before we get started? Uh, yeah, thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank you for coming. I know it's a long ways. Yeah, it was a long way. It took me about a little bit less than 30 hours. Uh -huh. Well, San Diego will be a little closer. Yeah, a little bit closer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we dispense with the pleasantries. Um, so I, one, one question that somebody brought up to me is, when will 1.9 be end of life? So is one, dot, uh, one question that I wasn't sure on, is 1.2 officially end of life now? Yes, okay. I think, and, right? <laughs> <laughs> how, long, how long do you see 1.3 going on? I mean, I know, that, I know the last year we talked, you talked a lot about people should just switch to 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, so how long do you want to continue with doing 1.3 patches and stuff? Uh, you know, the, we, we cannot maintain the three versions. So right. after the, we're going to have the really 2.1 in next December, so the, the maintenance for the read 193 will gradually disappear. Okay. So, you know, another year or so probably for 193? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Okay. Um, I know uh, a lot of people want to know, uh, you know, what's been going on with MRuby. You want to talk a little about what you've been, what cool stuff has been going on with MRuby? Uh, the MRuby is kind, uh, it's kind of like a usable. The we, we are not in the, we cannot declare it as a stable yet, so that we didn't put it, the, any version number on it. So right. just latest. <laughs> but, Buyer but, beware. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's usable, and uh, some companies still are uh, under the experiment in using MRuby in their production, like an uh, internet router, so mm -hmm. embedded MRuby in the internet router that, that, so that they can write uh, routing, uh, routing rule. In, in Ruby, DS, Ruby DSL, yeah. or some other company is experimenting embedding MRuby in vending machines. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Back in Japan, the, 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 there are vending machines all over the, the street. Oh, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> and then, and then the, the most of the vending machines are really uh, computers with the vending vending feature. So, can you get a computer from a vending machine yet? Yeah, you know the. You could get MRuby from a vending machine that's run off MRuby. Uh, that yeah. would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, so you know the, we have the you know, the vending machine with some kind of the, the LED display, yeah. and a, and then we have the feature to play games on it, or the, maybe the lottery or something like that. Yeah. So so they they got to create a software for new vending machines so then they need to create a tons of software for vending machines mm -hmm. so they need to be productive so they allow they would love to embed a higher level language in sure. to develop their their software that's cool yeah i have seen i think i saw that there's a an nginx module that to run mruby stuff and stuff like that i guess that's the probably the target that's the idea of mruby to begin with right uh, so mruby is target to be embedded in the, for devices and the, the software so the a, a guy was working on and, and the both mod mruby and the nginx mruby which both uh, embeds uh, mruby and the, the web servers so mm -hmm. so that they can write uh, the the extend web servers by using sure. Ruby programs. Like for example, so you can replace the mod real light mm -hmm. uh, by uh, Ruby uh, regular expressions and, mm -hmm. and uh, Ruby uh, light programs. And then in the other application is the, the in combination of the C group, which is the kind of the resource management of the, and the functionality of Linux. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, uh, say list, uh, uh, limit the bandwidth to, to each uh, yeah. request or something like that. So you can control the, uh, the web server to very fine grain. Sure, gotcha. Um, so h how, much does, how, how much time have, has, how do you split your time between MRuby and MRI? Is it mostly MRuby now or? Uh, you know, as a programmer, I spend most of the time in MRuby. Uh -huh. So the, we, we have tons of the smart developer back there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't need to work as a programmer for so. Ruby any, anymore any yeah. longer. So, so the, yeah, I know. I, as a language designer, I still work on, on uh, making decisions for the language spec and behavior. So after that, I just order them to, <laughs> to implement. So, so, so I, I 
no longer work as a programmer for MRI. Have, so have you had to do, have you had to sort of delegate to others more this last year? Has that been harder or has it been sort of a progression that you've been doing? You mean CRB? Yeah, CRB. Oh, CRB. Yeah, you know, do we, you know, do we have the, one of the smartest programmers in the world for, <laughs> as, a, as our the lead committer, so I don't have to worry about that implementation. <laughs> you know? Very good. Um, so another question that we had was, um, if and I, we've had this question before, some of these some of these you've heard before, but people like asking you every year, so uh -huh. I figured I'll indulge them. Um, if you had Ruby to do over, what would you do differently? Like one uh, one yeah. thing. I, I, you must get this question all the time, though. Yeah, and uh, I I I can think of two things. Like a, for, for the the one is to remove the. Pearl, uh, the variable inherited from Pro, like dollar slash dollar comma dollar something <laughs> something. So I, you know, the, in the, the very early stage of the Ruby development, Ruby designing. So I, I wanted to uh, replace Pro. Mm -hmm. So the, we took many features from Pro, but uh, I, I admit I did too much. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'd love to remove the, these kind of the global uh, the special variables. Gotcha. Then the second thing is that, you know, the, in the two, 20 years ago when I started uh, designing Ruby, so the, the multi-core or the parallel programming is not really popular among sure. uh, us. So we only have the computer with one CPU. So, so we don't have to worry about multi-core or something like that. So the concurrency is for the, the you know, the the programming architecture, so not for the performance. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's okay for to be have uh, some kind of grand strat. So that's what I did. But you know, the, I didn't uh, expect, forecast the, the current situation. The, the, each PC has the several, several cores and the, 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 you know, the performance of the, the each core is not growing any longer. Right, right. So that we have to utilize these cores uh, asynchronously. So the, upon that situation, the programming model should be changed. Mm -hmm. So if I tell, uh, tell myself <laughs> that yeah. if, if I could, could tell go myself, back, yeah, you could go look, back and whisper to yourself yeah. in a dream. Yeah, probably by time machine. So yeah. I will tell you to remove the threads and uh, then, then put something different, like uh, actors. Mm, or, okay. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good segue to uh, another question we have, which is, I think we talked about this last, last year too, is have you had any more thoughts about sort of like immutable data structures? Should they be part of the core Ruby? I know there's, there's, uh, there was some discussion at RubyConf this year about a gem called Hamster that provides a lot of um, immutable data structures, but it, it can be slow just because of various things, and it would be, you know, they, people were asking me, oh, it'd be faster if we could have it in the core of Ruby. Have you, have you thought about that at all? Uh, you know, the object-oriented programming itself requires some kind of the mutability, so that the having some so the immutable data does not help that much if we program in the object-oriented way, and uh, you know, Ruby is still considered as an object-oriented programming language. Mm -hmm. So that's I, I'm not sh sure yet that the, well, the having the, them in the core might would have a very huge okay. uh, performance boost. It seems like we're kind of that you're that maybe C Ruby is sort of slowly. I know that there was the whole discussion about frozen strings, mm -hmm. the ability to easily make frozen strings, yeah, yeah, which yeah. you know they're a, they're a kind of immutable data structure. Yeah, yeah. So the you know the, I'm we are gradually uh, moving toward the, some kind of the the supporting functional programming or the, maybe the immut with immut immutable data. So. But, you know, just, I'm not sure yet. Sure. But, you know, yeah, having, having, you know, having C written uh, ad jam mm -hmm. can be as, run as fast as the, sure. the core. So Absolutely. you don't have to be in, in a built-in. Right. I guess that's true. So, you know, you've, do you feel more like um, 
that you 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 want to see more of that kind of branching out in gems rather than having to figure out how to pull it into the core, probably? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so we cannot provide everything in the core. Right. So the, we need to be uh, keep uh, the standard distribution as small as it, it could. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, let's see, where should we go next here? Um, this is a good one. This is a really important one. Everybody wants to know the answer to this question. Is Nobu a robot? <laughs> It's a very, I, I'm, it's a very important question that we want to know. As far as I know, he is a human being. Okay, he wasn't cre he wasn't created in a lab in a no in an NACL no. lab. No. Okay. No. All right. But well, you maybe, heard it here, folks. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, I I didn't watch him 24 hours, 10 days. <laughs> he he maybe. may he may plug into a charging yeah, plug, and you're not yeah. watching. That's what you're saying. Okay. Well. So the mystery, the mystery remains. Mystery remains. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, we, we're, we, you're getting ready to, to do um, 2.1 very soon. Um, what do you think is the most exciting thing in, in 2.1? Uh, you know, after 2.0, we, uh, we uh, try to keep the compatibility a lot so that there's no big change in the language. Sure. But uh, you know, as an implementation, she will be finally introduced a generous garbage collection mm -hmm. by, uh, for the sake of the, the Koichi's work. Mm -hmm. So the, the, you know, the memory heavy program would be run much, fa much, much faster. So that, that would be, that you can expect the performance boost. Any other little, maybe little things that, you, uh, that, you, that you're you looking know, forward the, to? You, you can. Any, any things that you finally add? We add, add several suffixes to the, the number retail, so you can okay. write the, the rational number or hmm. the imaginable number uh, uh, the, uh, in literal. Okay. So you don't have to work, uh, write about the complex, new, something, something. Hmm. In, gotcha. Yeah, instead, you can write one plus one i mm -hmm. to create the complex number. Hmm. Gotcha. That's cool. <laughs> We've got a mathematician, an imaginary mathematician in the audience, I guess. <laughs> had to, you had to work that in, right? Um, um, have you thought much about 2.2 .2 yet? I mean, I know it's a ways down, you know, and you'd, I know you've got a ways for, for 2.1, but is there anything that you, while you're working on 2.1 or discussing with the other uh, developers on 2.1 that you said, this is a really great thing, but we're going to wait for 2.2. .2. Have you thought about that? Anything like that? Anything that we could get excited about? Not yet right now. Okay. So I, we are still focusing on 2.1. Sure. So to delegate 2.2 to, to, to the future. OK, cool. Um, let's see. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? Yeah, if no, you guys have any no questions, mind. I'm just no kind of reading over mic. the questions that I have here. You can feel free to get up and, and use the mics, answer questions. Obviously, I'm, you can ask sort of whatever you'd like. You, go, go back to the mic. I'd ask you to use the mics mostly because it's recorded, and if you don't use the mic, then I have to repeat the question, and I might get it wrong, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so why don't we take a couple questions? Yeah. So you mentioned that if you could go back and talk to yourself, you would... Uh, plan more from the beginning to deal with multi-threaded cores and processors. Um, do you have any plans of improving that type of support moving forward? Uh, you know, the, maybe 15 years ago, the, the, this virtually, there were no, virtually no one using Ruby extensively. But right now, the probably millions of people using Ruby, and there's a, a trillion Ruby programs. So the, I, I, we, we don't want to break these all, the, all at once. <laughs> so the, we, the change will be, the, must be gradual. So that we have to uh, create some kind of transitional path. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Hi, this is a question from the Vancouver Ruby users group. Uh, do you have any plans on separating the development of Ruby from the development of C Ruby? Uh, what, what do you mean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, we we so like, mo mo maybe more like you know the, uh, it's been a few years now, but the working towards the standardization and, and looking at the standardization. I know that you've you've previously said that you you consider 
CRuby, the reference implementation of that standard. Would you ever say, like, you know, maybe you continue your work with MRuby and you want to say, okay, this standard, I want to work on the standard, and maybe there isn't a reference implementation anymore because you, maybe you've got multiple sort of a quorum of implementations doing that. So it, it appears good in, in the first look, but uh, you know the, we we have very limit we have very we have very limited ability to understand the, the behavior of the language without uh, uh, actually experimenting on it. So we yeah. really 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 need uh, reference implementation before yeah. making the final decision. So the the separating you know the fixing fixing uh the the language behavior without uh, any implementation reference implementation or even the experimental implementation so there's the there's no that's i don't think that's a good idea so maybe the reference implementation will be changed to say rubinius maybe in the future but anyway we will ha we still need to have uh, single reference implementation before the fixing the, the language behavior. Okay. Um, you know, uh, we had a, a question about, you know, sort of concurrency things have obviously come up, and, you know, there's a lot of talk about concurrency here. And, you know, is there anything that, you know, the, the other implementations or the community could do to, to help with that? To help with concurrency in, in general, is there maybe gems that you would you'd want to see you know people use more, or um, things that the other implementations could help out on to I don't know to assist with? Yeah. So, so you know, the, there are so many ideas to improve the concurrency in the Ruby programs, but the, you know, the, the many of them are just an idea. So. We need to prove them to work well with the, the Ruby implementation. And so, so if if any of you or anyone before the screen <laughs> yeah. have have got uh, any ideas, so just just feel free to uh, to contact us mm -hmm. through the the you know the bug tracking system or any any way you know, through mailing list or any place. So, so that we can work together to make it, uh, to to experiment it to be better idea. So, if it turns out to be a good idea, so we will love to improve the the implement uh, Ruby implementation. Okay, it's like a, a good example, I guess, might be there's a number of actor gems out there. Would it? I mean, would it, you think it would be good if the 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 authors of those actor gems looked at them and said, oh, well, it, if Ruby had this feature, my actor gem could work a lot better. That might be something that, that, that they could contribute back to say, like, could, could we add this feature in so that my actor gem could be more performant or work better or whatever? Yeah, yeah actually, at least we'd love to discuss about sure. the issue. Sure, okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, I see you're wearing a Go t-shirt. Uh, I was wondering, uh, first, are we gonna drop C Ruby and just have Go Ruby? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but for real, uh, what is it you like about Go, and maybe more broadly, what uh, features from other languages do you think we might see in Ruby in the future? Uh, you know, the, I'm a C guy, so I used to see. I I program for in C for a long, long time. Maybe before uh, before you have been born. <laughs> Some of you have been born. And it, you know, I love C pretty much. And it, but still, you know, the C is pretty old. So the, we need to have some kind of system, a modern system programming language that, and then that could be a. It could be Go in the future, so I'm pretty expecting Go. But it it, ten, it but but it's too young, so we are, I just want to watch on. What it. do you what what what's your favorite? Have you done much Go programming? Not not much, but I love Go Go routine and channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the sort of the multiplexing on top of uh -huh. like sort of yeah. fibers. In a yeah. way, if you will. And its object oriented system is pretty much interesting, like a dark typing on top of static, static typing. Gotcha. And anything in those, the second part of his question, any, any, other, any other features in other languages that you wish we could figure out how to put into, into Ruby? Well, the, as a language wise, there's, 
you know, I mean, that doesn't have to be just, doesn't have to be syntax, it could be mm. functionality or something like that. Yeah, the functionality-wise, I'm pretty interested in the, the behavior of the beams, uh, like an hour-long virtual machine. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, we have language like Elixir or something. So we, I, I'm, yeah, I'm watching it, okay. watching them. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'd love to, uh, and I like the, some kind of the, the soft, soft transaction monitor in language like Clojure. Mm -hmm. So. Cool. Um, okay, let's see what else we got. Um, boop, 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 boop. Oh, so, um, it seems like this year there was a number of new people added, new C Ruby committers added, um, and I noticed that most of them were not Japanese, they were they, or they didn't speak Japanese. Has it been hard in integrating more um, non-Japanese speakers into the mix? I know that, especially, uh, you know, I know that that Zach uh, had done a lot of documentation and various other things. Has it been has it been hard? Has it been a ch much of a change or? So, uh, since several years ago, maybe maybe four or five years ago, so the the main decision was made in English. So, so you guys don't have any problem sure. in have the tracing yeah. the, our decisions. So, the having a committer not speak Japanese is not that much problem. Good. So, but we still have some kind of the you know the the issue tracking meeting in Japanese, but the, the, it's not that much, that big issue. So okay. we have the des uh, language designers meeting in mm -hmm. IRC, or you were one of them. Mm -hmm. So the the main, so we we make the the huge, make the big decision in English. So you guys um, having the core committee, non-Japanese core committee, it is not a problem any longer. Okay. Um, any other questions out there? Um, I've got a few more on my list, but I wanted to open it up. Oh, we got one coming up. Hello. Uh, I thought I'd borrow from a panel discussion in the other room. Do you believe in good versus bad code? And if so, what is the difference between them? Uh, it, it, uh, you know, the good and bad are very subjective, so it depends on the context. So, and this, you know, the, in a Chinese proverb, the white, no matter what, white or black, the, the cat catches the mouse is a good cat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the working code is good code, <laughs> I believe. And then, you know, as for the maintenance, uh, you know, the, some code is uh, less maintainable and some calls are, are not. So that, that in the longer, for the longer project, the maintainability might be more important than others. So did I answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Hi. So as you two are on stage, I would like to hear what do you think about the Rubinius X thing, troll face? <laughs> um, oh, oh, go go ahead. Ahead. oh, you want me to go first? Okay. Um, you know, I think, you know, Brian and I have talked about it, um, you know, and I think it's a good place to, to do experiments, to try and figure out, you know, like, what could we take away? Where could we, where could we see things going in the future? And then, you know, once you've kind of figured, you know, it's, it's difficult to know how to get somewhere unless you know where you're going. You, otherwise, you just wander around and maybe you show up somewhere. Uh, it can be very useful to say, okay, well, I want to be out here. I know that I can't get there directly, but I know that I want to be there. And Rubinius X can provide the ability to know where we might want to be uh, with experiments and, and all kinds of things. And then once we figure that out, then, it's e then it becomes the next discussion is, okay, how do we get to that place now that we know that that's where we want to be? Um, so I think it could be very useful um, for that kind of that kind of thing. Yeah, and then the, 
I believe it's our responsibility to keep, keep compatibility just because you know, we have to maintain the tons of tons of Ruby program running all over the world. So the, it's, it is kind of difficult to make some kind of the drastic change on that language for the, the, the Ruby. But you know, the, but, you know, I'm a true believer of diversity. To diverse, so you have to make progress so without burden to keep uh, backward compatibility. So the, the, it, I, I could still Rubinius X as is that kind of attempt to the seek the future. So it may or may not succeed, but that's okay. We, at least we make challenge to the future. So the, as a, uh, uh, to repeat, as a uh, true believer of diversity, so I welcome the, that attempt like uh, the Rubinius X. Yeah, I mean, I think that someone um, someone commented recently that you know the when a language tries to make a big compatibility change, whether it be from one eight to one nine, which you know wasn't really that big, but it still required a lot of time. Um, even like Python two to Python three, I guess is going to be a ten year transition now. Um, Perl five to Perl six. I don't even have to say anything more than that, I don't think. But um, it <laughs> takes a 20, long time years. unless it takes a long time unless there's very small migrations. I mean, there's even, you know, there's there's lots of C code out there that has never been updated for like C eighty nine or or let alone ninety nine for that matter. So um, it has to be it has to be a slow process, but you have to know what that process should you have to know where you want to be in order to figure out what the process is. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. Hi, this question is about functional programming in Ruby. Um, but before I get to the question, I just want to say as an aside, I've heard some people complain about the, the stabby lambda and the dot parentheses notation, but I think they're brilliant because if you're doing a lot of functional programming in Ruby and you have to use the word lambda and the word call, it just becomes, it's, it's so much more cumbersome. So I really like that. Um, anything that you'd like to tell us about your view of the role of functional programming in Ruby and any developments that may be coming in the future with that? Uh, Stabby Lambda. So I remember a few <laughs> years ago, that everyone was complaining about it's Stabby really Lambda. It's really gone now, though, isn't it? No one really, ca no one's, everyone's like, yeah, fine, whatever, we'll yeah. use it. Yeah, I won. <laughs> you did win. You absolutely won. Well, you know, we've got more Unicode now. Should we, you know, should we put the actual uni Lambda Unicode character as the uh, option for it, it, in, the, it in the grammar? Is, is it easy for you guys to uh, write the it's Lambda impossible. character? <laughs> it's like Shift-Alt-K-L-M or something like that. I don't know what it is. Yeah, for us, Jeff. Yes. It's a lot easier to write emoji now uh -huh. than it is to write a Lambda character. Yeah. <laughs> okay, use emoji Oh, is there lambda. a Lambda emoji? <laughs> oh, what a missed opportunity that is. Yeah, maybe anyway. maybe train character or something. Yeah. <laughs> the train character. <laughs> Definitely not Smiley Poo. Not Smiley Poo. But the train character I like. Yeah. There's there's someone's exercise for tonight. Send yeah. the patch in to parse.y. Yeah, maybe to, fat aloe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, stubby lambda. Yeah. yeah. That was a good invention. Do you, I have a question. Now this yeah. is sort of, I, had this, I, I wrote this down. This is a good segue. Do you write stabby lambda where the arguments aren't, aren't, are not in parentheses? Do you ever do that? Do you ever write uh, hyphen x stab space x comma y curly brace? Because uh, I find that really hard. That's, that's always my thing. I find that super hard to read. But that's just me. Do you ever write that? Uh, I sometimes. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't. Is that is, Eric? Would we, was that a Seattle style stabby lambda? <laughs> okay. So yeah. so no Seattle style on the stabby lambda yet. Yeah, maybe in the okay. under the the cold golf. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can read these two characters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, what was the question? Functional programming? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think well, the other question was what about dot parens? Da, the, yeah. the actual question was... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's okay to make a diversion. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the we got time question, to burn. Go ahead. <laughs> the actual question was um, what do you see as the role of functional programming in Ruby development, and are there any developments coming in the future, you think? Uh, 
you know, the, it's, it's quite difficult to, to adapt the full functional programming in the object programming language Ruby, like Ruby, but, you know, the adapt, some kind of adaptation of the functional programming is good, for, good, good like, a, like a functional combination or something like that, so it would uh, improve the so efficiency or the productivity of your program. So the, as, as long as it's good, uh, what I'm say, good, Good practice. To uh, I'm I'm pretty positive about the, the accepting some part of the functional programming. So I, if it is useful, as as long as it's useful, I'd, I'd love to uh, support some some part of the functional programming. Okay. Good. So twenty years ago, this was kind of a pet project that you were working on as a language and it's grown into something that we all use and is, is used in many different contexts. Um, I wonder how much risk are you usually willing to take in implementing a feature and how much you feel like you can't take the risks and put in a feature just because you want to? Uh, as long as, as, long as it, it doesn't break the existing code, I'm pretty positive about the changing or enhancing programming language. I have, a good, language. I have a good example then. You can dig back. I mean, you're gonna, you're, you might need your laptop to figure mm -hmm. this one out. Okay. I went back, um, I was playing with writing some new language, whatever, for fun. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this is sort of related to dot parens. Mm -hmm. um, I found that in 2007, maybe, that there had, there, that you had put in the ability for if there was a local variable that you could just call that local variable with parens, no dot. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. But why did you take it out? Uh, you know, the too many people use uh, local variable p. Oh. And the method p. And so they would do p parens and you'd end up calling dot call. Oh, that's the best answer. I, I would never have thought of that answer. That's, <laughs> but that totally makes sense. Oh, yeah. okay. Huh. Yeah. So for, for those of you who haven't trawled back in the annals of uh, yeah, random parser history, um, <laughs> there was a patch. It was, and it, I think you ha it, was, it was during like the one, early yeah, one nine experimentation phase. At first phase. I got that idea. I, was, I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So well, I, and, and I, it was there I, for like I considered myself as a genius. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, but I like implement that. Yeah. So soon after that, I must have got troubled. Oh, yeah. Because it was it was in there for like six months, but it was like it was pretty early one nine experimentation yeah, branch yeah. where there was a lot of uh, things in there. Basically, it was that. And I think you probably got it now that if there was a local a local variable, you could just if you had the name of the local in parens, it would actually turn into dot call on the the local variable, and so. It's sort of what now dot parens is, but I, I to, that totally makes sense. That yeah, you, <laughs> p would sort of screw it up entirely. Stupid p. Um, <laughs> ruined Agreed. A good, ruined a good thing. Um, this is, this is, a, this is uh, another good question. Do you feel like you're you know so you've been um, you've been working on one project? You've worked on other projects, certainly, but one big project for 20 years. Have you seen your, your, the style of the code, your style of your code, evolve over time in such a way that like, sometimes you go back and look at something and be like, oh, man, why did I ever think this was good style, that kind of thing? Has it been, do you find that interesting? Because it's been one big code base. Obviously, there's a lot of authors, but you always, sometimes you go back in and find, like, oh, I wrote this back in who knows how long ago, because I can tell because the style's weird or something like that. I don't know. The, my style has been changed for a long time. Yeah. So, the, interestingly, so when I, I'm a language geek, so I would love to look into the, the other programming language, source code. Mm -hmm. And then when I look, look into the, the other language, I don't remember the name anymore any longer, but, you know, that source code looks so familiar. <laughs> So, and uh, I look back into the Ruby, uh, counterpart of the Ruby source code, it was identical. It was copied. Oh. <laughs> the, so that source code was in my style. Wow. 
Yeah, that was quite amazing. Huh. Yeah, but I, the, the, my primary style hasn't been changed for the last 20 years. So as a, as a programming, programming style-wise, so the, I, I haven't that kind of feeling. But you know, the, I, as a knowledge-wise, I, I have improved, I, I believe. So, so the, maybe the, the algorithm I cho chose was wrong sometime. And then maybe the data structure I, I chose was wrong in the, in the back mm. in 20, uh, gotcha. a few, uh, 20 years ago. So, but the, the programming style-wise, I haven't changed. Has your, um, sort of a, another sort of soft question, if you will, um, has your like, development setup changed much? I remember, or do you still do most of your work on Linux? Yeah, I still use in Linux, and okay. I use, still use Emacs. Mm, okay. I'm an old guy. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you upgraded your laptop recently? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, but yeah, but my laptop is two years old, so I, maybe it's time to, to upgrade. Okay. So I'm sure you could find someone to get you a laptop if you really need it. Um, uh, yeah, we have a question. Mats. Yes? <laughs> how, how Ruby is changing Japan? Changes what? How, how Ruby is changing Japan? So, uh, like, I'll, do you see a lot of Japanese programmers? I know that for a long time, Ruby was bigger in the US than it was in Japan. Has it mm -hmm. said, do you feel like it's changed over time? Uh, maybe, I don't know. I know it's, that, it's, I know that w one thing that we talked about years ago was it, was it was harder, that one of the reasons to do the standardization was you wanted to allow Ruby to be used in more Japanese companies, because yep, yep. a lot of times they required this, using a standardized language. Mm -hmm. Has that helped, or ha do you know? Uh, I guess so, so some, some you know, the, Government subsidiary organization requires that kind of standard to be uh, to use language in their systems, but and uh, the having ISO standard could help to choose Ruby as as the implementation language, and uh, maybe some big bigger company like a, a Japanese industry uh, industries are uh, basically controlled by bigger companies like Toshiba, Hitachi, and NC or something like that, and Fujitsu, and uh, and uh, these companies are gradually accepting Ruby to, to implement their systems. So, the, you know, the, a few years ago, so the, you know, Ruby is used as a, a hobby programmer or the, the small startups, which is not as popular as in the States. And, uh, but uh, right uh, currently, the Ruby is uh, used by the, from bigger company to small company. So, so as, as, we, as long as in the web field, the Ruby is pretty popular in Japan as well. So that's a good segue. I know that Ruby World is coming up, and I know that we've also got the Ruby Association. Do you, do you, um, do you want to give us a preview of what's going to go on at Ruby World? And the other question I had was, um, do you feel like, you know, has the Ruby Association been, um, has it helped Ruby inside Japan or helped Ruby in general? Do you think it's been, mm -hmm. has it been so, nice to have? You know, the Ruby, in, back in 1927, I guess, you know, the, the open source world and the, the, the IT industry world are pretty separated back then. So the, the, one of the purpose of the Ruby Association is to, to bridge the gap between the, the suit people and the, <laughs> the geek people. <laughs> so the, we are doing pretty well at this in Japan. So we have some kind of the, the certification to, to uh, provide proof at, to be a Ruby programmer mm -hmm. to suit people. Yeah. And then some kind of the, uh, you know, the grant to, to help uh, the, the TD works in yeah. to ask to TD works to to the, the geek people like sure. uh, maintaining one nine three or something. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maintaining the old version is kind of supporting burden. Ruby itself. Yeah, supporting yeah. itself. You know, and uh, we have some kind of a grant like uh, helping Sci Ruby, scientific Ruby, to enhance the Ruby application to the scientific computing or maybe some kind of the uh, the 
improvement on well of the web or the even a uh, you know, mobile mobile world so uh, the, what you know uh, what kind of stuff's going to go on at Ruby World? No, uh, what, or, you know, like I don't mm -hmm. think probably most of the people here have. Yeah, been to Ruby the World. Ruby World conference is held in Japan in two weeks later, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and uh, it will be held in uh, the Matsue, Japan, which is my hometown, and uh, the local government sponsored that conference. So, and uh, the the conference itself is mostly focused on businesses. Mm -hmm. So the maybe half of the attendees wear suits. Mm -hmm. It's kind of exceptional for Ruby conferences. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's very impressive. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the part of the, the purpose is to, to introduce some kind of the use case of the Ruby in the, in the ID field. So like, like our suit people uh, want to know how other companies use Ruby for mm -hmm. their businesses. Mm -hmm. So the, the, how, the, the sessions, Half of the session is focusing on the use cases. The other half is uh, focusing on introducing new technology to, to people. And uh, we invited uh, Mojambo of GitHub mm -hmm. as a keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. So to, we, he was going to introduce about some kind of the social calling to, mm -hmm. to Japanese people. Cool. So, yeah. And uh, it's, it's this world conference. So right, the, right, the right. we have this, and uh, we have uh, the, attendees and the speakers from other countries as well. It's, it's beautiful there if you guys ever get the chance to go. It's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Yeah, um, Yeah. we have a question. Um, hi, Matt. Um, I came in a few minutes late, so I apologize if someone already asked. Um, but Matt Amanetti told me um, this morning that you told him we should be using a different version of the Malloc C library called T Malloc? J Malloc, I guess. J Malloc. That it would allow us to run, you know, get back to garbage collection. It would help us run our programs faster, or mm -hmm. you know, release memory back to the system more quickly. Or so. can you explain what you meant? Oh uh, yeah, uh, you know, the the C Ruby uh, delegates the underlying memory management to malloc and free, so that it's up to that these implementation to how uh, return these pages to operating system or not. So some implementation of malloc keep uh, every page is uh, allocated inside to, to uh, improve the performance. But you know, the, that means the, the process will grow and grow and grow. So the, a friend of mine working in a, in a program named FluentD, which is kind of the, the high performance distributed logging system, mm -hmm. and uh, they had some kind of memory program. The, so the, the process will grow using uh, using the glibc malloc. So the, they doubt about that garbage collector, so there should be memory leaks, they, they doubt. And then we, I, I work with them, with, with them, so they found out it's malloc mm. that keeps memory. So they, Later, they replaced the malloc to, from Clib malloc to JE malloc, mm -hmm. the, which returns the, the memory pages, the unused memory pages, and then the process size will uh, reduce dramatically. Hmm. So okay. the, the, it's, it's quite easy to use that. Just use the LD pre rolled. Mm -hmm. So then the, for them, the, it, it has a dramatic, dramatic effect. Mm, okay. So the, maybe you, you have some kind of the, malloc pro, the memory size problem. You can, at least you can try JE malloc for, if, if you are using Linux. A real pro tip here, people. Pro tip, thank you. Um, I think we've got time for a couple more questions. So yeah. Uh, it's not a question. Uh, I'm working on Linux kernel and GLBC, so then I answered the previous question. So, uh, uh, currently, all of modern uh, Malloc uh, have uh, a path rate optimization, but Ruby have a GVL at uh, then. So this optimization and Ruby usage uh, uh, conflict several times. So mm -hmm. and uh, the Ruby people re uh, realized that why uh, it makes slower, and we plan to implement. So they. I expect uh, so this situation can be uh, improved uh, 
next year or oh, something. That's good news. Yeah. Great. So after that, you don't have to worry about J. Okay. Um, a double pro tip. Look at that. Um, yes. Uh, I find the internal C code that you wrote for the MRI to be very elegant and a source of inspiration. But at the time you were writing it, C++ seemed to be uh, very in vogue. Uh, why did you not use C++ for Ruby? If you talk about that a little bit. Why did I choose the C++ for to implement Ruby, you, mm -hmm. you asked? Because yeah, it, it was the early 90s. You know, C++ was cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, but you know, the... You wanted to be cool. You were a young <laughs> kid, you know? <laughs> But the, this, there are several reasons, but the, the, the biggest one is the, the having C++ object system and the Ruby object system will confuse my brain oh. very much. <laughs> so the, the C not having object system is much better for me. So, and uh, the second one is I used to be a C++ programmer and I was troubled. I hate C++ back, back then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back then we, we didn't have uh, the templates, we didn't have the multiple inheritance, so it, the, but the compile time was so slow, it would take hours to compile. Mm. So, so that's, that's one of the re reasons I didn't use C++. Were, were you, you know, when you started it, I don't know, I have ever asked this question to you. When you started it, were you thinking at the time, oh, well, this is just a hobby, uh, I'll open source it. I mean, there were probably, you probably weren't thinking in the mm -hmm. terms open source, but I know that you, when you, you were talking with your friends and you put the source code up, were you thinking at the time like, oh, I'll just let anybody play with this and that kind of thing. Uh, is that true? Yeah, I was, I was raised by the free software. I, I learned program re through reading Emacs source code and I used GCC to pro mm -hmm. compile programs. So I learned a lot from reading other free software, free, imp free implementation of the programming languages. Right. So, so it's quite natural for me to uh, make my software to as open source. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm a free software guy. Sure. So, so, so I, I didn't any, I didn't have any trouble to, so to if you were, a lot of free software. To, to get back to his question, if you were reading a lot of free software, a lot of free software at the time was all in C. There, pro there probably wasn't very much free software in C++. No. Because I don't think GCC got C++ support until after that anyway. Mm -hmm. So it would be very difficult to be a piece of free software and be C++. That yeah, might yeah. be another, another sort of good reason. Um, that's about the, so uh, this is a, a question, another question that I just, sort of came to me, sort of maybe wrap up fun question for the end. Um, do you want to tell the like story about how uh, it was almost called, like it started off as a Lisp implementation mm -hmm. before it turned into Ruby, Matt's yeah, Lisp? Matt's Lisp, yeah. yeah. Do you want to tell that story and then we'll kind of close on that? Uh -huh. You know, the, I, I had been a big fan of Lisp programming language for a long time, but I, but you know, I, I'm just, just a wannabe. So I, I had been just wannabe, so I, had never never had a chance to to program in Lisp in in reality. Sure. So so I just write some small piece of Lisp code and this is oh this is quite nice. Yeah. This, uh, <laughs> this language has a lot of features. This, this language give uh, gave me a lot of freedom. So I like this programming language. And then then at the time I started to uh, create my own programming language. So I wanted to. The, my programming language as free as uh, Lisp, as powerful as Lisp, but without, with, but with those parentheses, <laughs> <laughs> an object system. So yeah. that, in that way, so I, I take some, some kind of the, I implement the, some kind of the, the Lisp virtual machine, and uh, then I put some kind of the uh, Smalltalk object system, uh, the, the subset of Smalltalk object system, and put the, the pro functionality on top of, of the object system, so that that is the kind of like a, the the process to create the that, of the a design and the implement uh, implementation of the Ruby programming language. So did it look like? Was there a time where it looked like it was actually a Lisp before you started like being like I think I want my own syntax? No, it it, okay. it is like that okay. from the beginning. Okay, okay. Um, oh, oh. Yes. 
So I, I actually have two questions. Okay. First, did you know that grape nuts are neither um, a nut or a grape? Grape? He's just, he's just, he's just being silly. What? <laughs> grape, grape nuts are a cereal. Grape nuts are cereal? They're a, cer they're, they're a cereal. <laughs> and they are neither a grape nor a, it, it, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so the second, so the second question is, and this is a, this is, I'm just asking this because it's a RubyConf tradition. Uh, when are we going to get a macro system in Ruby? Uh, <laughs> that's a good list. Uh, okay, uh, I will return uh, you a uh, traditional answer. Never. <laughs> Well, I think that's probably a great place to end. Um, if no one has any other questions, um, thanks again for coming, everybody, to RubyConf this year. Um, be sure to say uh, thank you to uh, everybody working the registration desk on the way out. And um, I will see you all in San Diego next year. Thank you. See ya. Everybody will be dancing tonight. Everybody will be dancing tonight. Everybody will be dancing tonight.